Pierce One and Fake Friends on Surrey Hills Radio, where we are joined by the incredibly talented Mr. Aaron Norton. Hey. Aaron, good afternoon, mate. How are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, good man. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Very glad to hear it. I know that um, a lot of people are down with all the lockdown and stuff, but this is what radio is about. Eh? It's uh, communicating and not having to see people. So it's perfect for people like me. <laughs> <laughs> Ideal. Um, we would usually do this in the studio, obviously, have a proper face-to-face chat, but obviously because of the virus, thank you very much, China, by the way, um, we're doing this remotely, and it's the first time I've ever done an interview remotely, so uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, and then when we're back to normal, we'll uh, we'll have the red carpet down at the studio and you can come in and co-host. <laughs> oh, can't wait. Um, Aaron, you know, as you know, you know, Surrey Hills Radio, we do play your music and have done for quite a while. Um, this is actually our first proper interview with you. Um, yeah. So for those who don't know loads about you, I thought we would start with a bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, well, my name's Aaron Norton and I'm... Uh, a singer-songwriter, I do covers gigs, and I do some guitar lessons as well. Um, I'm a dad of three girls, me and my partner Vicky um, have had the three girls over the last five years, so Heidi is five, Darcy's two and a half, and Betsy is three months old. Oh, so that's a handful then. <laughs> it certainly is, yeah. We we, decided, we we planned it that way. Yeah, oh good, that's all right then. Um, you're engaged? Yes. Yeah, and yeah, got engaged at Box Hill. Oh, that's that's fancy. Hang on, let, let me get, get my pen. I should write that down. Box Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to take some uh, take some ideas from that. Um, and when were you supposed to have a wedding this year, or when when, when did you propose? When was that? So I proposed. Um, well, I'll give you a bit of a backstory um, <laughs> because. Because Vicky would like to have been engaged a long time ago. But with three children in the mix, it's been very difficult to be able to do that. So as soon as Betsy was born, I had a period of time between Betsy being born and Vicky's 30th birthday. So that was mid-July until the end of September. I had to get the proposal in somewhere in the middle. So I I think it was pretty much exactly in the middle. It was the 18th of August. No, oh, I, I saw you roll your eyes there. Yeah. That was, that was cool. <laughs> I'm not the best with bait. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you're, are you planning to, well, I guess once it's all over now and then you can have a big party? Well, exactly. I mean, we've, we've decided to plan in 2022 rather than 2021 because uh, I still think even if things resolve themselves a little bit, there'll be a knock-on effect. So mm-hmm. we'll hold tight and... Yeah. <laughs> take the long 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 route to planning it <laughs> um now moving on to your music career um mm. we were talking the other day and you were saying that your the first song that you ever performed live was tears in heaven by eric clapton which is a, a great choice um thanks at your school concert in 2001 now was it from there that you decided that that's what you wanted to do or did that come later on Yeah, well, no, it didn't come later on. In fact, it probably came earlier than that. Um, You know, the desire to do it was there already. Um, But prior to that, my brothers used to sing and I used to be in the background playing the guitar and I'd Mm. always wanted to be the guy in the front. Um, And this particular year, my brothers are three years older than me and they're twins um, and they were going on their first lad's holiday um, and it coincided with the school concert. Um, (laughs) So my dad just said to me, oh, Aaron, you know, I think you can sing that song. And I said, oh, OK, then I'll give it a try. Um, and it, it just went like so well beyond what I, I ever expected. Um, mm. I performed the song and do you know, there's a video somewhere and I'm going to have to dig it out. Um, be, be interesting to watch back, probably a bit cringy, but interesting. <laughs> um, but I, I sang the song during the school concert. And it was just really silent. And I, I remember feeling like it was a, um, like a moment. But for me, I was kind of just getting into the music and I didn't really look up at the audience or anything whilst I was singing mm. it. Um, but at the end of the school concert anyway, the head teacher came out to close the event. And um, he said, I think one person stole the show tonight. And I think you can all agree. I'd like to invite Aaron up for an encore. So I got invited back up to sing the song again. I didn't even know what an encore was. So I walked <laughs> up, took a bow and went to walk away again. 
Um, but anyway, that kind of solidified it for me. That's for sure. Yeah. Having that, because it's always nerve wracking, you know, seeing, especially your first time when you we go out in front of an audience. Um, I mean, you don't get that with radio because you don't see the audience, but yeah. it's still nerve wracking knowing you've got so many people listening um, and you don't want to muck up. Yeah. You know, yeah. the only benefit for me is if I muck up, I can walk out of that place and no one knows what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it, it's funny you say that because it, it's, I was always very, very shy when I was younger. And, you know, I remember my mum would be talking to friends and I'd kind of cower away in the corner um, and I wouldn't know what to say back to anyone. But when it came to performing, even though I did feel nervous, um, I when I was up and I was singing, those nerves disappeared. They just disappeared. Yeah. And I was able to just, um, I think because I'm naturally introverted, I was able to just go within my own space and uh, yeah. made it a yeah. lot easier for me to perform. Yeah, it's it's like that nerve, nervous, but also excited yeah. um, feeling. And also, like you said, once you're there and in the moment, you've started now, it's just getting to the point where you get going and then, that's and then it. that's it. The rest off. of the world disappears. Yeah, exactly. Um, you've been in the business now for 14 years then, um, if my maths is correct, which usually it isn't. Um, but luckily I've got a bit of paper here that I've written down and used a calculator for before. So I know that. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's been your sole occupation since then. Um, yeah. as, as well as obviously guitar, teaching guitar lessons and stuff. Yep. Uh, um, which is incredible. So let's get one of your songs down now, mate. Uh, this is one of Aaron Norton's newest singles that he has recently released. This is Nightfalls on Surrey Hills Radio. Aaron Norton with Nightfalls on Surrey Hills Radio, where we are still joined by the man himself. Aaron, tell us how you came about making this song. Obviously, it was recorded during lockdown. Uh, so what was yep. the actual process behind it? Good question. So for, since my girls have been born, um, it's been difficult, first of all, to find the time to be able to write songs. And then cool. secondly to find good subjects to write a song about because I was always um, so uh, autobi uh, autobiographical. Yeah, no, <laughs> What's the word? Um, we'll edit that. Biographical, <laughs> autobiographical about myself. And so I had to try and embody like something else in order to be able to write the song. So I kind of, like, I guess I still was autobiographical to a certain extent because um, I kind of imagined the person that I would like to be, kind of took myself and then imagined myself in a different scenario. Um, and um, I also thought, well, I want to write something that's a bit edgier than I'm used to writing because I am often write acoustic-based music, which is mellow and um uh, often they're often ballads yeah, um, yeah so i i went on to logic and i got a drum beat up i went through a few of them thought right i like the sound of this um and just had that playing on loop for a while and just kind of messed around on the guitar and all of a sudden i just hit this chord sequence and i thought right i like That's, that it stands yeah. out it sounds interesting and intriguing and feels like the kind of vibe that I'm looking for. Um, off the back of that, um, I st just got the recording of the guitar down. I probably reworked it a little bit in terms of the order and stuff, but I found it pretty quick. Um, yeah. So then I just started writing the lyrics and I just had to imagine where I was coming from. And the words, it, it's funny how it works. It often just happens. And I couldn't tell you how yeah. it happens. I've got the image in my mind. I know the kind of vibe that I'm after, but I wouldn't know where to start if you put a blank sheet of paper in yeah, front of me. Yeah. But as soon as you start feeling it, all of a sudden the words just kind of start flowing out. So I was recording as well and just kind of got... Um, <laughs> Anyway, 
anyway, along those lines. But it, yeah, and you sort of put bits and pieces together. You get a couple of words and... Exactly. And once I'd formed the verses, um, the chorus kind of wrote itself. Yeah. And do you ever find that you're eating dinner or something or um, you're talking to fiance, your fiancé and you go, oh, hang on a minute, you've got to run back to your studio, get a guitar and think, oh, I've got to just try this, it's in my head. Have you ever, <laughs> do you ever do that? Uh, do you know, not as much as I used to, no. It's, <laughs> life has been segregated these days to yeah. life at home and things that get done there and then things that get done in the studio. Um, so I kind of walk into the studio and get my creative juices flowing and then I walk yeah. out of here and I try to let them go, though. Like, yeah. That's easier said than done. <laughs> your, your studio, talking of your studio, yeah. um, since lockdown, you've sort of managed to, to go ahead and do, do more bits and pieces to it, I think you said. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, so where we live, we're fortunate enough to have a garage um, and I claimed it. As soon as we saw the place, I was like, that's mine. <laughs> um, and I've built... Um, I should be able to see it. I've got a pallet. Well, no, we're on radio. Uh, we've, <laughs> I've, got, <laughs> I've got a pallet wall and I record all my videos in front of this pallet wall. Um, but during lockdown, my was recording, I was having loads of issues with the, the sound quality of my vocals because when you're in a room where there are lots of reflections and it's not the biggest yes. space. Um, Bouncing off each other. Uh, it plays havoc with um, a recording. Um, yeah. So I, I've, I've built myself a vocal booth as well. Managed to get some rock wall from a good friend of mine. He just happened to be getting rid of some. Um, built some frames out of um, some p- panels of wood and uh, put the rock wall in between and then got bed sheets. Like I bought them from, where did I get them from? b and Best shop in the world. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap them round. Um, so anyway, I've got a vocal booth now and it just means I can walk straight into the vocal booth, record the vocals and I've barely got to treat the vocals at all afterwards. Fantastic. It's, it's an incredible story really because one of those you hear quite a lot, um, people adapting to the circumstances they're faced with, which as a human you always yeah. do, but ultimately it's very different this year and I think it's great in a way because like, you've been given the opportunity to do things different um, and no doubt you've enjoyed the process. Oh, I, I've loved it. Um and, you know, I, I, I know that some people have been affected by it adversely. And, and do you know what, in terms of the gigs and stuff, so have I. I mean, the, the gigs just aren't there at the moment. Um, but um, I've made a commitment to myself that I will come out better off after this than I did going in. Um, and that means, you know, doing the jobs that I often didn't have the time to do before all of this kicked yeah. off. Um, and, you know, I was able to use a space outside and build this vocal booth. And I couldn't have done that if it was winter and we were locked down. And I couldn't have done it if life was just carrying on as normal. So, you know, yeah, all of these things have should in the long run be really helpful. Blessing yeah. in disguise. Bless, blessing in disguise. Um, well, fantastic. Aaron, thank you so much for your time, mate. No doubt we'll be... Uh, catching up again soon hopefully in the studio i'll make sure we've got the uh, red carpet rolled out for your entrance um <laughs> but, uh, yeah hopefully it won't be too long and we can have you in in on the show co-hosting mate that'd be incredible take care mate that was aaron norton live on surrey hills community radio uh, we have aaron's newest single farewell coming up later in the show but until then this is nathan Dorr and ksi it's called life